Hello, listeners, and welcome to Episode 9 of Snippet Sports Science Podcast, your weekly snippet of applied sports science information. I'm here today with Chris Cavillio to discuss the article, Digit Ratio, Testosterone, Cortisol, Aggression, Personality, and Hand Grip Strength. It's quite a lot of things. What do you think of that, Chris? There's a bit of background here and some really cool information behind this here. So what they're really talking about is the digit ratio, 2D to 4D. If you look at your hand, you have your, your 2D, which is your second, which is your index, and your fourth, which is your ring finger. And in this paper here, it's the midpoint of the ventricle crease proximal to the palm to the tip of the finger. So really that midpoint. And it's that ratio between 2D and 4D. Traditionally in research, it's been shown to be a negative correlate of prenatal testosterone concentration and a positive correlate of prenatal estrogen and is also negatively related to performance in a number of sports. If you look at a lot of research, they talk about how testosterone concentrations are related to strength, speed, power, and also to behaviors such as aggression, determination, and motivation. So in terms of sports, in in particular aggression-based sports, it's really important characteristics to have high levels of testosterone. The paper goes upon previous research saying it's reasonable to assume that a negative relationship between the 2D and the 4D and physical strength influences that ratio and some sort of sports correlation. In particular, when you look at in a competitive type environment, these concentrations, testosterone with performance, is much more highly correlated than testosterone concentrations in just control conditions or just in in normal life. It's the competition which actually brings the acute rise in testosterone. And in winners, researchers have actually shown that either pre-levels of testosterone concentrations or the rise from pre to post competition is positively related to performance outcome. So I looked at 2D to 4D. Ratio. They looked at concentration of testosterone, cortisol, and they also looked at different challenges to actually quantify some form of competition. One thing they measured here was hand grip strength. One thing I actually didn't realize is is that men with high hand grip strength live longer, have greater density of their bones, show less developmental instability, and are rated as better dancers. Better dancers. Yeah. Who would have thought? So, so straight away, I'm reading this paper and going, "Wow, that's actually some really nice, interesting facts." The predictors of hand grip strength have also been reported to include total body mass, fat-free mass, aggression, and different personality traits. Put this a bit more in perspective. So for example, low right, 2D to 4D, and even low right to left have been reported to be associated with spikes in testosterone production in in conditions of intense exercise. The lower the number, the better it is. Okay. Once you add competition into it, it's actually a negative correlation. Okay. So So short index finger, long ring finger is stronger. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. And you say that's from prenatal effects? That it creates some sort of correlation where the, the ring finger ends up longer than the index finger. They say it's all prenatal. And you look at studies previous to this, the testosterone levels are weakly correlated to aggression in just normal baseline conditions. But when you add in some form of competition, that's when the increase in that correlation improves. Yeah. Okay. And so they reckon that has more to do with sort of behavioral things. Because I'm imagining... If you've got different finger lengths, that could affect your grip strength biomechanically. So could it be biomechanically favorable to have that ring finger longer than the index finger versus the other way? Quite possibly. Yeah. Okay. So talking about the study methods, so what sort of participants did they recruit? They had 89 healthy men. So what they did when they came in, it was a crossover design. Subjects came in, they had 10 minutes rest, they took a saliva sample. Then they had the challenge. The participant was then either assigned to the challenge condition or the control condition. So what they did there is they actually looked at a video screen for four minutes. The control was a blank screen. (laughs) Pretty boring. The the other one was an aggressive video of four minutes of videos with rugby tackles. There's been lots of research that's been shown how hormones can be acutely changed by different type of vision. To assess the effectiveness of the aggressive video, each participant was asked... Two questions. Firstly, to what extent has physical aggression been shown in the video? And the second question was, how aggressive does this video look in general? So they were scored out of 100 for effectiveness. So zero was not effective and 100 was highly effective. The mean for the former question, so to what extent has physical aggression been shown in the video, was 84.7 out of 100. And for how aggressive does this video look in general, 80 out of 100. Okay, so fairly aggressive. 
Yeah, definitely. After they finished their challenge, they answered their questions and then they had two questionnaires. The first one was a 10 item personality measure. And the second questionnaire was a Buzz Perry aggression questionnaire. So around this point, we're about 15 minutes and they took a second saliva sample. Previous research has demonstrated that concentrations of salivary testosterone peaks at around 15 minutes after the physical stimulus. So really good timing from a study point of view. Once they've taken their saliva, then they had two maximal hand grip strength attempts with their dominant hand and the mean value was recorded. So the testing procedure was then repeated after approximately one week where they did the other condition. Okay, so two trials, aggressive video versus the non-aggressive video. So the subjects were randomly assigned. Yep. And then one week later, the subjects came back and performed the other condition that they didn't do earlier. So aside from the protocol, they had their 2D and 4D assessment, which we spoke about earlier. And they also collected saliva for testosterone and cortisol concentrations. Okay, so they're looking at aggressive video versus non-aggressive video. And they're looking at those outcomes of the testosterone, cortisol, aggression, and and uh, was there a personality measure? Personality measure. Personality measure, yeah. And, ha- and the hand grip strength. Hand grip yep. strength, yeah. Okay. And so what did they find? Their big finding was, in terms of repeatability, they found for hand grip strength, there was high and significant repeatability for the first and second test. Very high significance, and the intra-class correlations were also quite high. Both left and right hand 2D to 4D ratio showed high significant correlations for the first and second measurements. And mean left and right 2D to 4D ratios were calculated and found to be significantly correlated also. Therefore, they used the means for the left and the right 2D to 4D in all subsequent tests. So they would get a greater pool of markers that they could actually look at. The main purpose of the paper was actually to look at the relationship between the digit ratio and hand grip strength. Firstly, the mean hand grip strength was higher in the challenge condition than in the control condition, and the difference was also significantly stronger. Yeah, that's what we care about is we care about strength at the end of the day. Everything else is sort of in between, and we want to get to the final destination of does it make them stronger. So the hormonal changes, the mean testosterone after the challenge was significantly greater than the mean testosterone after the control. So P was 0.04. Okay. No change in C. However, looking at other research and other papers we'll, we'll delve into later, that's something we'd probably expect to see looking at this type of video. The focus of the study, however, was to look at the relationship between digit ratio and the challenge and control conditions. They found a significant negative zero order correlation between the left digit ratio, but not the right. Interesting. Yeah, so P was 0.03. Their R value was negative 0.23. Yeah. So a, a low correlation, but nonetheless a negative correlation, which is what they thought of, but a left Okay, That's only for the left hand, not for the right hand. Correct. Yeah. Well, was there anything about hand dominance with that? I didn't read anything about hand dominance. I have no idea. Yeah, interesting. Definitely. When they looked at the different questionnaires, the personality questionnaire, the scores for verbal aggression, anger, and hostility showed no significant differences in the challenge and the control conditions. Physical aggression was significantly greater after the challenge compared to after the control. So P was 0.04 here. The personality questionnaire that was only emotional stability, which was lower after the challenge compared to after the control. P was 0.03. Okay. Well, those are the main findings. The left hand thing is really interesting. Why I'm interested in the hand dominance is, does that have a bit to do with brain development as well? Right side of the brain versus left side of the brain. Because we're looking at personality and measures of aggression, that sort of thing. And those, those could be quite a bit different for left side of the brain versus right side of the brain which would then be affected by hand dominance or quote-unquote brain dominance. Sure. And it could be also the subjects they selected. So if you look at the actual subjects that they used, they were healthy men. They weren't sportsmen, sportswomen. If you went to a different group of subjects where there might have been elite sportsmen, we could have seen something else where there may have been more of a dominance with right-handers versus left-handers. And this is one of the themes that they came through in the discussion to say that it's all about relevant situation. And that's what we find in all studies, to be honest, is that it's the group that we're specifically working with that actually the results are relevant for. Yep. So everything needs to be taken in context with respect to taking a result and, and yeah. doing something with it. Yeah, especially if you think about sports that require more grip strength versus others that would be less dependent on grip strength than more other factors. And if you used a group, say, elite rugby union players, when they're looking at rugby tackles, right. it's really relevant to that group. Yep. So did you see a, 
a greater correlation with some of the aggression measures because they actually can relate to it a lot more. Right. All right. Anything else that they pulled out of their results? The other things that the paper teased out in the discussion was that in the control condition, there were significant positive associations between hand grip strength and BMI, physical aggression and emotional stability. But there were no significant associations with hand grip strength and digit ratio. In the challenge condition, there were significant associations for left digit ratio, but not right, and emotional stability. Therefore, associations between digit ratio and strength are weaker if there is no control for male-to-male challenge behavior. They concluded that men with lower digit ratios and lower right-to-left digit ratios tend to produce higher levels of testosterone. And they also mentioned the testosterone and cortisol ratios when challenged with intense exercise or aggressive stimuli. That was also drawn in other papers and research as well. So in conclusion, the authors stated that they found in non-challenging conditions, the digit ratio in men is weakly and non-significantly related to strength as measured by hand grip strength. However, when there are controls for context and participants are challenged, the digit ratios are likely to show a significant negative correlation with strength. The results in this paper, however, indicate that this association is independent of body mass, testosterone, cortisol, aggression, and personality. Pretty cool study. What were your takeaways from that, Chris? Either you're born with it or you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did this study when I was in Bath. So we, yeah. I did a whole heap of some digit ratio. And it actually makes me want to go back and have a look at it. Yeah. I think I actually pulled my data, which was incorrect. Whereas I should have looked at it midweek levels versus game day levels and actually saw if I had a relationship. And I think that would be kind of cool to go back and, and look at that information and to see. I, I think this is just really, they're, they're novel as I say, it's the relevant situation that this group of people are at. You need to take this information. And I think the underlying thing here is you show that if you put a challenge situation with the right stimulus, you mm. can actually get the correct rise that you're looking for for a performance enhancement. And that's what I really took away here. It really links in nicely with lots of other papers that will that everyone would have read out there and that we're going to review over time. Yeah. So do you think we should use this for talent ID? I think that's actually a really good idea. Really? Yeah, why not? When you have large pools of athletes coming in and you're testing athletes, why not include it? Mm. There might be something there, there may not. It's, it's not always going to be the foolproof method. Right. That's a bit more reading for another paper at another time. Thank you, listeners, for tuning in to Snippet Sports Science Podcast. For more information, visit our website at snippetscience.com or follow us on Twitter at Snippet Science. Tune in next week.